The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 611 So Long, Puddles Puddles wasn't moving when Maple led Wallace, Marina, and Diego to the ship cabin where they had left her. Wallace had to squeeze his shoulders to fit through the door, settling for remaining in the hallway when it was clear any further would damage the ship. But Marina and Diego were instantly at her sides. No restraints? Marina bristled, staring instead at the blankets that were used to tuck Puddles' unconscious body in. She could- I don't think she can, Starlight interrupted, walking under Wallace to enter behind him. She wasn't looking good when I found her. I think she's hurt badly or weakened somehow. Right on the money, Puddles said, her metallic windigo voice speaking without the aid of her body. And if it isn't you, Free, long time no antagonize, Marina. Thought you were going to keep a closer eye on me after all that pirate business. Don't want any ethically dubious scientists doing things to your precious daughter's body now. Marina trembled in place, looking like she wanted to both punch and hug Puddles. Where did you run off to, she growled. One moment we were talking with Gazelle about what would become of you, and the next he shoveled me into a place less secure than he wants you to think he thinks it is, Puddles growled. Brain hurt at all? He kicked me into the heretic penitentiary in Gyre for safekeeping. Right back into the hooves of Chauncey. But you and him are besties, so surely he told you all about where he was keeping me, right? Wallace cleared his throat. This is the first we've heard. Starlight? He looked to the filly. Did you truly travel to Jaya to recover her? Starlight shrugged. I was teleported, and I found her by accident. Uh, Marina sighed. You didn't even wake up before you were taken away. As much as I hate you, it's my daughter you're holding hostage, and this time... This time you'll what? Invite me to a party so I can pit you all against each other for laughs? Puddles' voice faded momentarily, then returned. Nah, I've grown out of that. Switched teams, had my fun. Got a few bridges to patch up. Repairing bridges, are you? Wallace frowned. It sounds like a dubious trap. Or oh, like my back's against the wall? Puddles chuckled. Come off it. I know what's coming. See the glowing one over there? Iron flanks, some like to call her. Have her take a wild guess what happens if she touches me and discharges all that energy right now. Go on, you'll probably get it first try. Maple took a sharp breath. That time under Isvaldi, when I used the last spark I had been holding since Anridge, you really were hurt by that, weren't you? She swallowed, looking down at herself. And now, I've got more. I could remove you. Marina's eyes widened, and she was instantly grasping Maple's shoulders, nearly crushing her with brute strength. Is this true? Spare yourself the effort, Puddles groaned. It's even easier than you think. Why don't you pull back this blanket and take a look? Butt brand, the thing you ponies are so proud of getting. Diego lit his horn and granted her wish. On Puddles' flanks, her icy windigo cutie mark was plain to see. Or not see. It was faint and faded, almost to the degree white chocolates had been, and the adventurer's eyes widened in surprise. This looks quite like... Uh, Wallace fumbled for words. See that? Puddles sounded smug. She's not catatonic because her body's messed up, though I did put it through the ringer a few times. Subsisting on this harmonic regeneration magic instead of food and exercise for years and recovering improperly from a battle can take its toll, not to mention everything Chauncey's goons did in Isvaldi, but it's nothing some good eating and self-care won't fix. Nah, she's like this because I'm losing my grip. My power is waning, there's nobody at the helm. If you ever wanted to know whether your kid was still in here? Just me. She's been gone since before the beginning. And I know I've yanked her chain on this a hundred different directions before. But that's the honest and final truth. Good eating? Starlight scoffed. You mean like eating a whole Windigo heart? I heard about that. Marina's eyes wavered wide open. I don't believe you, she hissed. Relax, Puddles urged. I told you, it's curtains for me either way. 
I could hang on a while longer, or you could ask Iron Flanks to finish me now. Or I could just let go and slide away and leave you with an empty shell. Excuse me for liking my taste of the good life. So, do you want me to tell you how to actually get her back or what? You've gotten my hopes up this way a thousand times before. Marina winced, looking away. I can't put myself for this again. No, I don't want to hear it. Puddles' body slowly animated, like a marionette with its strings activating one at a time. She slid down from the bed, Cutie Mark almost growing visibly fainter at the action, and opened her pupilless eyes. That's too bad. Really trying to go out on a good note here. She turned to Wallace and Diego, then Maple and Starlight. Anyone else? Many takers? I'm being serious here. Who wants to fix puddles? Wallace bowed his head. I will listen. The real Puddles' soul is attached to a brand, and that's stuck in a piece of moon glass somewhere, Puddles began, starting without ceremony. You'll need to find that. Once you do, should be just as easy as letting this body hold it for a while. It takes some powerful stuff to sever a brand from a pony, and even stronger to sever a soul. But they're pretty good at coming back together. Everyone held their breath, listening, so Puddles continued. The pony who swapped her out and me in is a scumbag called Navara. He used to be in the eastern Yakakistan region where you first got me. But remember how you brought me around the Empire looking for someone who would help? And Chauncey bit? He took an expedition out there to look for clues and supposedly brought back nothing? Lies. He found him, captured him, and brought him back, and now has him slaving away in the tunnels beneath the hospital on research projects. Her eyes narrowed. Research conducted on yours truly. Really feels wonderful having the guy you turn to for help submit me to science under the one who gave you me in the first place, doesn't it? Marina watched Puddles with a steely expression. It sounds like we have a situation to investigate, but we won't be taking any action until then. Navarre's in his Valdi? Uh, Maple's pupil shrank. But he's the one who... She swallowed. I need to tell Valet. Wallace lifted a leg to allow her an easy way out, but Maple almost immediately stopped, nearly running into Amber as she tried to round the corner. Amber! Hi, Maple. Amber gave her a quick shoulder squeeze and ducked into the room herself. Do what you need to. I'm just listening. As the mayor's treated places, Wallace cleared his throat. You're firing quite the volume of accusations at a benefactor, he declared. Trying to pit allies against each other is an act you've been sorely guilty of in the past, beast. Puddles shrugged. Sounds like your problem to me. What I know is he had the obsidian with the real Puddles inside back when this began. Maybe he still has it. Maybe Chauncey took it from him. Who knows? But it's your lead to follow. As a matter of fact, Amber stepped forward, smiling a restrained smile. That won't be necessary. Wallace, Marina, and Diego all stared at her. Puddles blinked. What's that you say? Bananas, I'm here! Valise stumbled into the room, still looking floppy from her ordeal. Who said what about Navarra being in Esvaldi? Oh, hey, Valet. Amber waved to her. I was just about to remind everyone about a little something from Ironridge. Remember this? She held up a tiny velvet drawstring bag, slightly smaller than her hoof. Valet blinked very... Very slowly, Maple entering again behind her. Puddles, Valet whispered. Puddles, Ember nodded, opening the bag and dropping a single chunk of moon glass into her hoof. Carefully manipulating the bag, she turned it inside out, revealing the word written sloppily in the inside. We were all there when we found it, but the words? Only you and Gerardo knew, and me, because I saw it when you were showing me later. But after you were calling me and told me about her, and when I realized neither of you remembered... She grinned. Also, Gerardo really needs to learn to hide important things better. But here it is, Puddles' cutie mark. Diego snatched the bag from her in his telekinesis, reading over it with a critical eye. He passed it to Marina, who frowned. Where did you get this? Vali blinked at Amber, then stepped forward. In, um, uh, in a safe in Kiro's private villa in Anrich. Mercenary leader Griffin dude. And Bananas, he's in his Valden, isn't he? Wallace frowned down at Puddles. It seems there are developments that support your case. Huh. Puddles regarded the artifact. 
That's it. I can feel it pulling on this body from here. Looks like it's almost time for curtains. Maple flickered slightly with harmonic energy, but she hesitated. What's making you lose your grip anyway? Why are you just accepting this as a lost cause? Petals grinned, her voice momentarily fading again. Oh, there's plenty I could say on a lot of things. Let's see how far I get before someone gets tired of my last words. End of chapter 611